Hello, hello everybody. Hello, hello. Hi, uh, I am a, a guest today. Uh, what's the name of the show? The show's called Outbreak. Outbreak, uh, Outbreak. I'm, a, I'm the guest today and I'm interviewing Madonna. Hello, hello Max, thanks so much for having me. Ah, uh, well, you know, it's my pleasure. I, you know, I was asked uh, by Johnny uh, mm, to, he's the producer. Um, yeah, to to come here, and it was uh, I, I immediately jumped at the opportunity, being that I'm, that was free today. So uh, it, it's the honor is all mine, really, Madonna. Well, you know, I like to have friends in low places, and so I figured, you know, this is good for me, you know, to be around like new stuff and everything new that's happening over here at K Chung and these kids. I just love it. Yeah, uh, you know, you've always been a sort of a pioneer in mining subcultures and then uh, sort of turning them into mainstream phenomena. Uh, I mean, what, what kind of gave you the sort of uh, fascination with sort of digging up these subcultures and popularizing them? Well, you know, it's really hard because uh, basically the only thing that stands between people ridiculing you for doing something like that and celebrating you for bringing their culture to the mainstream, I think, is the quality, the level of quality. Right. So, you know, when I did Vogue uh, and, and brought that sort of New York black gay subculture out, and when I did, um, you know, Ray of Light and, and, and started really using house music and having that type of influence and... You know, even early on, I was really open. I mean, I work, uh, you know, Like a Virgin, that was written by Nile Rodgers from Chic. And so, th like, people don't think of that record as a, as a black-sounding record anymore. But in the 80s, that kind of R&B, um, that was what R&B more sounded like. I mean, my voice is not, is mo way more pop, has always been way more pop. But uh, you just have to do a really great job, I think. And, and you know, um, even though... And then sort of uh, celebrate uh, celebrate that work and, and talk about where it came from when when you can you know yeah of course of course so so early on when you were when you you grew up in in, in uh, Bay City Michigan that's right uh, you you w w what kind of woman are we looking at what does the young Madonna look like when she's in high school. Well, I mean, I was really normal. I mean, I had uh, one thing I will say is I was a really good student. I had great grades, but I just, you know, I just hated everyone. I didn't, you know, I didn't feel like I just, no one, I didn't really connect with anyone. I had this one dance teacher who I did really love. Um, and, um, but besides that, I just, you know, it wasn't. I knew so I didn't fit there. I was a good student. I didn't I didn't act out too too much. I mean, you know, a little here and there. Right. You know, bitch I'm Madonna, but Right. um I I for the most part was, you know, I just wanted but I knew I wanted to dance. Basically that's what I learned from high school. And that's what I liked in high school was dance and I knew so I just knew that I had to go to New York and just get out of that home environment. Um just get out of that home environment. Really. Okay, and so when you got to New York, I, I understand you were in a punk band, you were a drummer in a punk band. Um, yeah. How did you get involved with that? Well, you know, New York was really different, you know, in yeah. the 80s. A lot of crime. There was a lot of crime. I mean, it was like sticking my finger in like an electric socket or something, the experience of moving to New York. I mean, it was just such a... Uh, such you know I had all these horrible jobs I worked at Dunkin Donuts um, but uh, you know I just I just I think I just like I went there I only had like $30 or something in my pocket I can't remember exactly how much it was but I just I, I used to be I mean I can't be I don't even know what I would be like now if I wasn't Madonna but I used to be just a really friendly person. Like I would just talk, to, I mean, I was like a dork coming from Michigan. People are just like super friendly. How's it going in the Midwest? Like I would just talk to anyone on the street and I just met this guy, it didn't get weird. Somehow it didn't get weird. I just met this guy and he just, I just said, you know, I just moved, got here. I don't know where to go. And he, he put me up in his apartment and that lasted a couple of days so I could start getting some bad jobs and uh, hmm. Yeah, With the, this was this was was this relationship sexual or no or? no no well yeah. no no it really wasn't um and I just you know I just I guess I guess that 
that's really my uh, talent, you know? I'm not, I can't say I'm the best singer or the best dancer, but I have a, I have a good eye. And I just, somehow I knew, I mean, well, Keith, with Keith, Keith Herring, it was, uh, at the time in New York, it, you knew his work. It was actually unavoidable because he was just, there was these drawings everywhere. Right. Um, the subway where the ads used to be and uh, the graffiti culture. And um, Was he involved with the punk band that you were in or was that sort of a separate No, sort of- no, he didn't. He, his, you know, he really was, I mean, he was really interested in music actually. And it was really, it was a really great time because like, you know, Keith was really great friends with, um, I mean, I didn't really know him, but I knew Keith was really great friends with Fab Five Freddy, yeah. who was in, uh, you know, a rapper yeah. nowadays, or, you know, after that time of just the hip hop explosion of the eighties into the nineties, the two thousands for a rapper to be friends with like an openly gay person, that was like it, weird, you right, know, right. but, it, but then it was like, just because it was just so everything was so new you know and and it was just smaller and yeah because of the because it was dirty it was a dirtier city then and that's you know i think that's what gave a little bit of a window you know now if someone like keith herring tried to do that stuff i mean it would probably just get you know painted over it's just so fast or whatever and then of course people would go out and try to try to take his to figure out ways to get the work off the wall once he really that's why he stopped doing it really because he just had gotten so so if you're running around keith herring um i know that you you talked about in the past with with hanging out with uh, jean-michel basquiat uh uh, so i understand you guys had a brief but uh but but brightly lit um emanating smoldering relationship of some sort oh i i loved him so much you know and um but i couldn't handle I couldn't handle the addiction and uh and you know he was because he was so talented and everything but it just got to be way too much i mean uh yeah and i had he had given me a ton of his art and um yeah i understand there was a lawsuit recently uh or something like a family was trying to block you from reselling it or there was something in the news oh, well, about that. oh no what happened okay i don't even know about that what i remember happening was when i i broke up with him he made me give him all the art back and i at the time you know i didn't know anything he was just this guy i was dating i mean he was had some career you know but it wasn't right. like i mean it wasn't like it is now where he's like this art god or whatever so i gave him the work back and he just uh he painted it all over it all he just painted uh, it all black okay. so it just it, that was it for that's gone but uh but he was so talented and great and um you know uh and so uh open you know he was really interested in what i was doing with music and and really impressed with the way that could reach so many different types of people and um and uh yeah but you know it just you know didn't work out but uh i don't like to look at back at those moments for the negative i mean we were just kids you know i was like of course you were just starting out so so i mean what then led to your to your first record contract uh on uh what was it virgin records i forget Mm, at this point i forget too this catalog is just so crazy um yeah i think it was i think it was well i was my i i did this one record with my boyfriend at the time jelly bean Benitez Street Talk, I think was what it was called. And that was his record, but I sang on it. And that was like one of the first, cause I never even thought of my, I, ne- I was a dancer, you know, I didn't even think about singing, but with the, I got really interested in art and um, performance. I, you know, I was around up some performance art and graffiti was a performance art. And I loved, um, actually i was like a big hippie in high school in a way like i really loved jim morrison and i would i did i did do in high school i did a talent show i did a performance of of, um like a doors performance oh wow and went like wild and i got like wild and crazy on like really like outrageous on stage like the whole thing and so i had a little taste for it and then um you know lizard queen (laughs) right i can't remember even what song it was but uh uh the um then people just you know i because I, I and i started doing some modeling i just everyone knows about that because there was naked you know i did some nude modeling we right. all know 
And so I was, you know, started to be interested in like this larger, uh, I guess we'll just call it a package of expression. Right. And so, uh, yeah, so I, uh, so I got a, so I got a record contract, um, you know, I mean, it helps to be friends with Andy Warhol, not going to lie. Right. And, um, and... And your record was a hit. It was an enormous success, Well, wasn't it? honestly, uh, it was a hit. Yeah, they, it was a hit record. It was definitely a hit record, but the thing that really put me on the map, in my memory of it, was when I did the, VM, I did the VMAs, way back in the day right yeah when you when you went on stage in that uh that bunchy dress and you kind of rolled around on the floor well here this is what happened really is as i was coming down it was like a wedding theme and as i was coming down off the cake um <laughs> i lost my shoes fell off right my shoe fell off like one shoe fell off kind of fell down so then i just kicked the other shoe off and i just and then I wanted to get my shoes back. I wanted to put my shoes back on. So my like way of doing that was to like slide onto the ground kind of and, <laughs> and think that would be how I would get it back. And then I, and you know, and so then I just went with that. And so I was kind of, you know, everyone knows what happened. I was like humping the ground with my underpants out basically. Right. And it was so crazy because I was just like, whatever. I was just feeling the moment. And I walk off stage and my manager at the time says to me, literally everyone just saw your dress was like stuck in the back of your underpants. Everyone saw your butt and it was horrible. Uh, your career is oh, your career is probably over from this. I bet your career is going to be over from this. This is this is it's wow. Were they really saying that to you? That's exactly what my manager said to me. Wow. And lo and behold, it was like the best thing that could have ever happened to me because that was it. And then it just turned into insanity. It just turned into you know all these girls wanting they just I go I do a concert and everyone would just look like me. I mean that's why that's why I feel like I started. You know, people always try to call me a chameleon or whatever. It's just like, I just, I just don't, you know, no one has to do one thing over and over again. No one. Oh, of course not. You don't have to do that. If you don't, you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> so that, that, that was, that was what really, that was what really, that was what really did it. And that really, I think kind of taught me a lot about what people think what like especially the music industry what they think could happen and what i wanted to do and how like those things like never matched up and i was basically like i feel like i was right a lot of the time well, frankly well yeah i mean it seems like at that time you could do no wrong um even without really intending so i i'm, I'm not sure whether i'm desperately seeking susan uh, the movie that you had a supporting role in came out before or after the VMAs, but uh, I remember at the time that uh, that movie was really being billed as Rosanna Arquette's sort of star turn. But everyone really only cared about you in this film that you had a you know relatively small role in, and uh, that also sort of solidified uh, your reputation as also being an actress, which uh, I think is quite interesting. So you did it really though? Did I'm it really solidify that reputation? Well, I mean, only in so far as that you know you could continue to get starring roles and to do film. You yeah. had bankability, I think. I mean, yeah. basically everybody in that uh, who saw Desperately Seeking Susan didn't care about Rosanna Arquette. They were looking at you. And now was that sort of your deliberate attempt to sort of steal the show away from Rosanna Arquette, or was that sort of an unintended consequence? Of, of this project well I don't I think she did a great job and you know everyone any actress any actress um, should approach the work saying I just want to do the best job possible right and you know that was like a funny movie because the director of that movie she was like doing like basically independent movies um, and this was like her first uh, her first like really big project, but it even was it wasn't even a big project, but it became a big project. What was happening with me is that everything was just snowballing, you know, like right. everything was just. I mean, people think about my most. Uh, well, I mean, I don't want to say iconic, but 
obviously people when they're like when was madonna doing like that spiritual work Gen- book of genesis work and they would say probably like a virgin or something like this my second album <laughs> even you know lucky star was a hit too but but actually that record of mine that sold has sold the most of my career is uh true blue right which was my like third record but at that point uh, the other stuff that had already happened it was just it, it just kept going in this direction that like it had never it basically i don't feel like for i mean i i couldn't have anticipated because i don't think it ever quite happened like that right 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 and you know you you're you're basically being caught in in a in, in this like rocket taking off basically i mean it was just sort of one thing after the other one hit record after the other and then all along uh all all along uh maybe up to this point or some time i don't know the timeline exactly but you were involved with sean penn which i know was a a very sort of stormy relationship and uh i i just wanted to know like you as far as i know you haven't really discussed much about uh, how abusive uh sean penn was to you and um you know how you look back on that relationship listen we don't need to we don't need to talk about that side of it i mean sean he because it's sean you know and he I think he's a great guy. We're still friends. I saw him. I saw him at a party like five, six months ago. I think I was in London. I think I was out in London, it's Europe, somewhere in Europe. And we just got. We just still get along so great, you know. And um, you know, people like you know, if I, you know, if I wanted, if I feel like what had happened. Like if he deserved, if he deserved to get taken out into the street and get a nice cultural drubbing and have his career ruined, I would have done that. Right. I could have done that. Okay. But yes, our marriage didn't. It, yeah, it didn't work out. I was really young, um, and he really hated attention. He hated attention. I mean, he, I hate attention too to a certain degree i like attention when it's about the work when it's about m- my creative output okay right, right but i really i mean let's be honest of course of course i like some of the other attention but <laughs> but that's big of you to admit i mean i like it more than let me just say this i liked it more than sean did and that was that was not great sometimes but I love I love him really deeply. I mean, hmm. I didn't want to open up about this with Howard when I was on his show, right? But he basically backed me in a corner because when I did Truth or Dare, I mean, but that was like twenty years ago. But I'll say this: when I did Truth or Dare, if you watch that movie, I say in the movie one of the backup singers she says, "Who's you know, who's the love of your life?" And, you know, I was dating Warren Beatty at that right. time. Yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, but I, you know, I said Sean, you know, and that was after it was all, it was all over. And, you know, um, so, you know, and he's gone on to do so many amazing things like Milk, I thought was just such an important movie. And, you know, he likes to do the philanthropy type stuff too. But, uh, you know, if I wanted to take, if I thought he deserved, cause I've been, I've, especially lately, I've been really open. I mean, I, when I, cause when I first got to New York, I, like I said, I was just talking to everybody. I was just an idiot talking to everybody on the street. And I was, you know, some guy took me back to his house and, you know, it got, you know, not as bad as it could get, but pretty, you know, it happened. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've been honest with that. So, you know, that's, that's, that's as honest as I want to be about that. Okay. That's fair enough. Um, okay. But, you know, when you, when Truth or Dare, uh, by the way, I have to anecdotally say that it was so rad when, uh, when you uh, stuck your finger in your mouth after Kevin Costner called your live show neat, uh, that you know you 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 basically made fun of Academy Award winning Kevin Costner behind his back on, 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 in a movie. It, was, uh, it felt really good. It felt really good to me at that time. So, but anyway, we don't need to go into that. But okay, so you had this relationship with Sean, and I, I've noticed. I, I I know you don't. You haven't had that many high profile relationships. Uh, you know, you haven't had sort of long very long-term partners in your life raising um your children and everything um i was with guy you know i was with yeah, guy but that didn't work out 
Yeah, but you know, we were together for eight years in London. Right. Right. The Bush years. The Bush years. Right. Good time to be out of the country. Yeah. But um. With Gwyneth. Yeah, we were hanging out. You know. But you know, a lot of my friends. I have a lot of friends who aren't. You know famous it's hard for me you know it's hard especially i mean it's easier now but there was times where i just felt like there was no one that i could really be honest with because i you know i had to sacrifice a lot personally right to get um to do it you know do you you think that do you think like that being madonna is a lot of work for one man to to be along for yeah of course it's a lot of work and it's uh but i love the work um i obviously love the work because i'm not still doing it i mean do you love the work more than say being in love well i can rely on it more because right. it's me you right. know right it's what, it's what i do is what i i'm in complete control I mean, you're not in, I mean, at this point, frankly, I am in complete control. It takes, you know, I was, I saw this interview with, um, Miley the other day and she was talking about, didn't you make out with her too? I think I gave her a little peck. Yeah. That might've yeah. happened. Okay. I mean, I, you know, I, I admire her, uh, her right now. She's getting in trouble a lot, not for, for the work, not for the stuff she's doing really personally. Right. Because that whole thing where she went out and she was twerking or whatever that room, cause she didn't think that she was just, I'm just, this is just, this is just the, where I am creatively. And this is what I'm going to go out here and do. She didn't, she didn't, I really don't think she planned it just from being around her. I really don't think she planned it like to be this huge sensational thing. Right. Like twerking had been out for a while. Like, um, you know, uh, uh, it wasn't like some new thing. Right. But uh, she doesn't think of herself like in terms of like where she's been. Right. And, and that to me, that's like, that's like a Madonna type moment when you just do what you want to do, not even thinking too much about just thinking about this is the thing, this is the work I want to do. And then people freak out about it. Like the things that people have freaked out about the most, I didn't even like plan for that to be, I mean, uh, in the beginning, later on, it did get, I, you know, I knew, I, I, I know what I'm doing. I honestly, I know what I'm doing with the media. I know how to work the media and and i don't have a problem with that yeah i mean you're you you seem quite a master at it i mean have there any been sort of any moments in your relationship with the media in the past 15 20 years that you felt like got out of your control oh of course um i mean the reaction the reaction to the book uh you know that really that there was a part of that where it hurt and i can i can look back at that now are you, are you referring to the sex book sex yeah, yeah. not the chill not you know mr mcgregor's apples or that children's book i did but not that okay that was fine okay uh, no the sex book really rubbed people the wrong way and um a lot of people and uh it really affected me i mean i did the record after that i did bedtime stories after i did erotica was sort of like a bridge but if you look at look at the way like i went on oprah i was looking through old pictures i went on oprah like well i was trying to push a vita was what it was and when you're trying to have a film career i think people want you to sort of just like i was just trying to just be just an actress and not just some outrageous character you know i was trying to represent as an actress because i i had gotten you know a lot of negative press for my acting up until that point. Um, some of which was a little founded, but a lot of it was not, I thought. Like David, I did uh, Speed the Plow, mm-hmm. David David Mamet play on Broadway, and people, I mean, New York Times uh, said it was really disciplined acting, but everyone else just trashed me for it and i got i got you know honestly i'll never do broadway again because i just wasn't prepared to do the same thing over and over again i got sick of it right but i thought i did a really good job in that yeah i mean i mean you you've always uh, sort of had a laser-like focus about whatever what whatever it is that you're working on um and you know that said i feel like almost that 
has sometimes arguably maybe taken precedence over the quality of work that you're actually releasing. And now, I mean, what would you say to some of your critics that, that maybe you haven't made a truly good record since the 1980s? Since the 1980s? Yeah. There are, because there are people that might say that. There are. Um, well, um, I guess we're all, I guess we're all entitled to our opinions, you know? Um, right. But, uh... But True Blue, you have to you have to admit, True Blue still is your, your number one selling album. I know we're not, we're not really, like, in a time where records are selling that well anymore. That's true. But... Uh, you have, you know, you, you know, with inflation, if there's record, something is record so, inflation, yeah. I'm sure that, you know, even still it wouldn't quite add up. No, no. I mean, you know, I, but at a certain point, you know, when, once you're Madonna, once you're me, certain, at a certain point for me, I've been, you know, I've done it. I've done world domination. Right. I really, I can honestly say I did it. Only a few people, I took, I mean, you know, I said I wanted to take over the world and I kind of did for a couple years. Mm -hmm. um, but now, well, you know, I still want to take over the world sometimes. I understand that feeling, but now I just want to, you know, try, try different things and have fun and, and and work with fun people you know um like you know like diplo or kanye or <laughs> mike tyson all these people that are on my new record um nikki uh uh and just have fun you know because uh th you know i never said i was like a role model i mean i became i ha i had to deal with being one but right Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, how, how that also leads me to ask, like how, how, you know, what kind of role do you feel like you play in your daughter's life? Um, I know that she's about college age now. She is. She's a, uh, she's a freshman in college. Yeah. 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 We just uh, had her boyfriend over for Thanksgiving. Oh, that's nice. Did, did you cook or did you have someone else do that? No, I think everyone was glad I didn't cook. Right. Um, but, uh, we have fun and I like him a lot. I think he's a, I think he's a nice, a nice gentleman. Okay. Um, Lola's new boyfriend. I mean, having raised your daughter in, in London and New York and, uh, you know, probably some of your 10 other houses, other places, uh, did you play a very active day-to-day -day role in your, in your daughter's life or, or was it, was she admittedly more of a latchkey kid? Oh, I can't believe you would ask that question. Of course I was involved. Okay. Right. Um, no, I, t you know, I, I think I'm a really good mother. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I love my kids. I ask they, they're, they're who I get advice for what I do a lot of times what I do now, you know? Right. And, um, I mean, they just, the thing now is the whole basic thing though. They just don't want me to be basic or, oh mom, you're so basic. And I'm just like trying to figure out how to not be basic is basically basically what what i'm trying with especially with rocco and um uh and uh lord well, i mean the other ones are still so young but um uh it gets a little tricky because you know rocco's like 18 19 so you know whoever i'm dating is probably only about five years older than that but <laughs> Whatever. So, uh, who are you dating nowadays? Well, we don't need to talk. I mean, I don't want to. I, you know, I'm. Uh, you know, I'm. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to say. But uh, you know, he's through work. Through through. Uh, you know, because that's how, that's the only way I can really meet people now. You know, when I'm when I'm doing work. You know, dancers. Right. So a lot of, I've dated a lot of dancers. A lot of a lot of male dancers. Yeah, I I, I, I would definitely imagine that. Um, and and you've also dated a fair share of uh you know uh, you know celebrities in various fields like you were dating Alex Rodriguez of the New York Yankees. Was I? I think you were. Well, was I? Yeah. You know, I hadn't heard. No one. Had, no one. Uh, no one ever brought that up. Before. Yeah, I think that was a short-lived one, though. Um, really? So he, he, he Is that what they say? I guess he was sort of forgettable mm. there. Um, 
Yes, yeah, sports. I love. I love. I love. I love sports. I love to watch sports. You know, I love to watch. What, what, who's your favorite? Uh, say baseball team. Oh well, that's you know, it's not about teams. I just like to. Oh, okay. watch you know what i'm saying you just like, like to the, watch i like okay. to see that i like to see. it's you know it's it's like a it's almost like a performance in itself the way they're moving all around and everything like the man is very you know very in the stripes i love the stripes but uh and the nba too i mean that was really i mean i did i was you know like 1994 eh, maybe it was a little later than that i i would go you know that was good like, because after after i did the whole t- tour around um, truth or dare I really just needed to chill out for a couple months and so I went to a lot of basketball games were you did you ever date Dennis Rodman yeah I might have done that I might have had a little time with Dennis Rodman and you also dated two shop Tupac Shakur I did I did just admit to that recently I was dating him right around the time I did this Letterman interview and he was just like fuck all this shit fuck Letterman mm-hmm. fuck the whole system fuck everything so I had this very fuck everything attitude when i went out on that show i mean i i think part of why that was so outrageous was i you know had more to do with the joint i smoked right before i went out but right um yeah i dated tubac uh he was really very nice i had no problems with him rodman though oh my god i mean i only dated him for like a month two months i mean everyone around me was like you're crazy why are you doing this you're crazy and they and that's not like you know i dated a lot of different guys you know white guys black guys and it wasn't like that type of thing he just was like and then he wrote about me like every every he wrote all these intimate sexual things about me i just that was not good and then charles barkley i mean i don't know why i'm i don't know why i'm bringing this up uh, like uh, volunteering this information could uh, what what is your next question okay sorry <laughs> i didn't mean to upset you madge is that right i call you madge um, i don't really like it okay I, um, if you we were really good friends maybe by that you know what i like you i like you you can call me m if you really want to but really even like debbie debbie mazar like she calls me madonna right does anyone call you maria like your your actual uh birth that's not name? my birth my birth i'm my birth name is madonna oh. madonna louise veronica Sacone. all right all right that okay. was my given name madonna it's not like uh is that's britney's real name there's so many of them, it's not that real. I mean, if you're a rapper, it's like you're expected to change your name. Right, 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 right. Like, what rappers just keep their name? Kendrick Lamar. Right. Nas basically did. Yeah, I guess, you know, nowadays it seems to be a celebrity, especially in hip-hop, or actually most pop singing things. It's, a, you know, par for the course to change your name. Um, now, can you talk about your relationship uh, with the Kabbalah? Oh, I mean, it's not... Like, people say it's, like, a cult religion. It's, like, some cult thing. And, you know, I'm not as hard... Going as hard on it now as I used to be. But, you know, it's just, like... It's just, like, another way of looking at life and how you should treat other people and stuff. And it's really cool. I mean, it's, like, Jewish... It's, like, a Jewish occult practice. Right. Basically. And I'm a very, I've, you know, I wasn't for a long time. I would never have said I was a religious person. I mean, I'm still not a religious person. I mean, obviously, if you look at the work, obviously, being Catholic is like, I would say, I would maybe argue being Catholic is almost as like being Jewish and that you, sometimes you feel like you can't escape from it. Right. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's come in and out of my work for my entire career, obviously. Obviously, I can't deny that, but Oy vey. yeah, but I mean, obviously it's, it's, it's like, so a lot of times there's a reaction to that, but I react it. Why am I reacting to this thing? It, it obviously means something to me. Right, right, right. Now, uh, so you don't have, do you have like an active meditation practice? Or oh, anything? I love, I love to meditate. I love yoga. I love to do yoga. I mean, um, that I think is really part a big part of what's kept me young and um, and diet too. Diet. I mean, I, I'm I'm a little more relaxed with some of that stuff. Are you are you vegetarian? No, I well, you know what I was was I was macro for a lot of years, macrobiotic. Mm-hmm. But um, 
Like, now I was kind of fixing to eat a you know pork chop, so then I went off that in right. the like late nineties. I guess it must have been. So I don't like I don't you know what I really don't like is like a lot of dairy. I really stay away from the dairy. It's really I really don't think it's good for you. Like uh, Dave Letterman was making fun of me one time because I. I lived in New York for so long and I literally, I never had a slice of pizza. I never had a single slice of pizza. Like he ordered me pizza and maybe eat it on the show because I literally, <laughs> I just was like, no. Well, I mean, when you grow up, when you're like young in New York city, I'm sure that's what all you ate for a while. Maybe it's no, like, I'm telling you right now, I never, even then I never ate pizza. Really? No, wow. I never did. And I, you know, I'm, I wasn't, you know, I ate some junk, but I did. You know, I I didn't. I just somehow I just never liked. I never liked a lot of cheese and milk and all that stuff. Have you ever me. had a drug problem? No, I can honestly tell you right now, I never. I never have. I mean, like I said, I've smoked a little weed. I smoked a little weed, but really just a little weed. And I tried thing. You know, I tried ecstasy once. Mm -hmm. Um. And I, you know, I love, you know, I love a nice martini, something like that. Right. But I, I've been around addiction a lot. And I think that taught me something that really taught me something. And I don't have time, you know, I don't have time to have some stupid habit that basically is just going to keep, hold me back. What's it, what's it going to do for me? Right. Right. What's it going to do for everyone else, you know? Now, I, you know, I have a question. I mean, you've been, you've been, you know, doing this for, for 30 plus years. And, uh, I mean, have you ever just kind of thought to yourself, like, what if I just stop making records and just chill? I mean, do you think that's in the cards for you? I mean, you're, you're about 60 years old and I'm 50, I'm 58. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, I mean, I'm just joking with you. I'm just okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, I, I mean, I was, I, I am wondering, like, you know, did, are, are we going to still see, like, an 80-year-old Madonna putting out records? Now, listen, here's my question for you. Here's my counterpoint to the question you just asked me. What? Have you ever, first of all, first of all, I, no, 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 Here, let's frame it like this. Have you ever seen an interview with Mick Jagger in the past 20, 30 years where they say, Mick Jagger, you are 50 however years old, 60 however years old you are. Don't you think you should just stop? Don't you think you should just stop? Uh, not just Mick Jagger, but whoever it is. Stop dating these younger women or stop doing shows or stop having fun or things like this. Uh, Bruce, well, Bruce, Bruce Springsteen's married, but... Just like these types of people, David Bowie, he's in a marriage too, but, but you know what I mean? Like, and that's, and this is the thing is, I honestly feel like I'm the only, how can I say this? Pop stars, aging, pop stars, pop stars like me, and I'm not just saying this was because of me, I'm just saying, because, you know, part of everything in life, there's an element of luck to life. But there wasn't pop stars like me before me, okay? Right. People claim, some people, some people will claim that they were the thing that came before me, the thing that built up to me. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'll give them that, but they were not me. And a lot of what I'm seeing going on now is great. I love it. I think it's great. But it is the same type of thing, some of it, as me. We haven't... S we, we see things that try to take me a little further. Mm -hmm. And I'm, ta I'm not talking about, you know, people are doing creative stuff. There's so many creative people in this world. But I'm talking about fe the female... The po female pop star package, the singing, the dancing, the videos, the, the, the female pop star package. And there are people that do different stuff. There's, there's people, there's Adele, you know, Mariah Carey, that's different than, that's really different than me. That's like event singing. I like her records. I like her records, but that's, it's ridiculous for me to even try to have a cop, but people, if someone would compare me to Mariah Carey, which has happened. People, I, it has happened. It seems ridiculous because we have nothing creatively really in common. No, you don't. 
um, I really don't, I really don't see it. And, um, uh, uh, but, but, I, but like I was saying, the total package, I'm the only one that's still in this and it is old. Er. That is in my, that's in my 50s, let's say. I'm the only one that's in my 50s still being Madonna. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, okay, I understand what you're saying. I mean, it, definitely along gender lines. Um, you know, that could be a potentially offensive question. No, uh, I'm, listen, listen, now listen, Max, I'm not offended. I'm just trying to point out the dynamics of my career and how it relates to cultural conversations around women and types, genres of music, mm-hmm. fun music. Cause I do party music. A lot of music is fun music. Right. I mean, you know, especially now that you're you know, getting older, how do you stay in touch with what younger generations of musicians and and cultural producers do? Because I, I, I my personal f- feeling is that you were you were very savvy uh, up until I would say the early '90s on picking up uh, musical subgenres that were just kind of starting to really take hold and exploiting them uh, for mainstream. Um, you know, pop production. So uh, n- nowadays, it seems a little. I don't. You're almost like sort of mining. You did the you did the Kabbalah thing, and then you did like the the rave thing, and I, mean, I, I But all that stuff has been well established. So you almost. It's kind of harder for anybody. This is not just your fault. This would be very hard for any pop icon to to maintain that sort of clear, direct line to to sort of cultures that you can use in your in your music so i mean would you agree that it's getting harder to sort of stay this sort of uh pioneer or kind of innovator um you have invented this form that a lot of people are copying but its evolution perhaps is is you know kind of spinning wheels at this point well this is what i will say is that it's hard for anyone at any age to to get their foot in the door really because um the world is changing I would say because of globalization, you know, when I first started doing work, there was a lot less genre crossing, for better or worse, for better or worse, happening in music than there is today, you know? Right. Like, the lines are very blurred between what's a hip-hop record, what's a pop record, and what's an R&B record. I mean, um... Uh, and so, uh, so like what's really new is, is seems, uh, you know, new, uh, there's new genres that come along, but, um, what's really new seems, um, harder to, but like I said, it's like a lot of it's my kids, you know, like major right. laser, I worked with major laser on this record, um, which was a fascinating experience. I mean, I love him so much, Diplo, but, I mean, we had such a great working relationship, but, like, he would send me audio files, production, and then, like, just send it to me, and I want to, like, be in studio with me and work, and I would be like, and then he would do it, but he would be like, you are literally the only person I would do this for, which seems to me absurd that people are making music, like, just sending things to each other over the internet, not even, like, talking one-on-one. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, um, I can imagine that being kind of alienating um, for somebody that that's used to perhaps the older school model of you know working stuff out in the studio together, being sure. in the same place. Yeah. Yeah, I have a, to, to skip track. I'm very curious about your opinion on uh, Azalea Banks. Um, there's been uh, not Azalea Banks. I'm sorry, Iggy Azalea, uh, who you know who's been criticized for appropriating. Um, hip hop music and and borrowing you know the whole visual culture and uh, popularizing it um, in this way and sort of hijacking it but without sort of giving it its its sort of original its due um, I feel like they could have easily have levied those sort of uh, those uh, um, criticisms towards you in the late 80s uh, early 90s so uh, do you see a correlation here or I mean wh- wh- how do you feel about um, this criticism in general I think I'm just gonna speak on this for me okay. because I don't <sighs> 
for me, when I did certain things, like for example, like a prayer, okay, that was almost a rock record. Right. In some ways, or at least what was interesting about that record, and I'm talking about uh, like a prayer to the song specifically, was that it really opened me up, my audience up even more uh, to just um, being interested in my work, just more types of people. And if you remember, do you remember the video for that record? Yeah. Um, it's basically about a black guy getting wrongfully accused of, of sexual assault. Right. I remember that. Yeah. So we're here... Uh, and I'm so, you know, I think this converse, this, the race conversation and the, of course the gay conversation, a conversation that I have been trying to have almost like entire career is just now really getting, um, heated in a, in a new fiery way. Right. Um, do you think it's maybe because our culture is really more willing to talk about it now instead of just sort of shoving it under the rug? That's what I, I think. It's just that people, because of the internet, people are able to express their opinions to many people now. And so right. it, certain media channels are not, uh, are the channels of media are more, are more, um, for better or worse, more open to everyone and more, um, Democratic, more yeah, more egalitarian. Um, but uh, so I guess what I would say for me is that I tried to do work at different times in my career um, that uh, addressed the issues of the culture that I was appropriating in a real way and um, and a, in a, in a creative way that. Um, didn't take, uh, you know, still lend itself to be able to create work that had a larger, a larger uh, body, you know, truth or dare. Talk mm -hmm. a lot about my gay fans in that movie. Um, mm -hmm. And I owe, I, you know, I owe them so much. Uh, I owe all my fans so much, but um, they've, uh, they've always, uh, they've always celebrated, and you know, I'm not a straight as an arrow myself. Let's be honest. Uh, no, no. And I've never been. I've never been dishonest about that. People don't like to talk. People don't like to ask me about that. Um, yeah. The whole thing, that all that stuff. But uh, uh, uh. So that's what I want to say about that. And I don't. I don't want to. Because I. I don't like to be a negative person. Right. Uh, because, you know, because then it, because this is the thing. I mean, you do have a reputation for being kind of tough and, and, and at times even rude. Oh, uh, oh, when I was younger. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I, but listen, people, people come for me too. Okay. Like, uh, Janet Jack, uh, okay. now I'm just like volunteering these pieces of information, <laughs> but it wasn't like, I just went in on Janet Jackson I didn't even go in on Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson went in on me, okay? And I respect Janet Jackson. She, to me, that was my only... <sighs> See, this is the problem. With women, we're always pitted against each other. We're always pitted in competition. Right. It's always about this caddy infighting. And you know what? Sometimes there are valid creative differences going on and people are artists who are sensitive about their shit. But other times it's like just this, that's like all they want to focus on, you know? Like I say one little thing in one little part of like a two hour interview and of course they air that and of course they, and I know I'm, you know, at this point when I do that stuff, I know I'm doing it and I love all, you know, I love all the, I love, I, I just love them all. I, all the little, all the little girls out. Um, <laughs> uh, so I don't want to say anything negative, but I, you know, people don't pit, people don't pit like, Mick Jagger against Paul McCartney or uh well some do I mean some some have have you know there's certainly like Beatles fans and I always feel there's like there's fans there's fans of the work but there's not tabloid fodder of what would be a oh right yeah, yeah I what would be a real, well it happens sometimes I mean and sometimes people have creative differences and and problems with the way the industry is but other times 
it's like i mean who are like the two biggest male artists right now justin bieber no i don't even know who are the two biggest male singers who do you uh, think it is uh J- pop stars pop stars gosh um i'm a little ahead of it these days kanye west kanye west okay uh, but arguably. he he's he's and he he's this is the thing too um americans in this country people in this country i think I don't want to speak on this. Kanye West is a big person and he expresses his opinion and that's his opinion to express. Right. Um, but people don't pit, uh, pit them against each other. Like almost like, uh, like without the, anyone even saying a thing without either party being, you know, no, like, no, no, it's totally true. Like if, if, if you have two, uh, you know, male pop icons, uh, at each other's throats it's usually like one of them actually does say something in public towards the other and then the media throws fire on it yeah but like uh, like uh the only one i can think of is um this whole thing with ariana grande and mariah carey sounding similar or whatever they're saying neither of those girls said boo about the other one it was just right it was just or christina aguilera and lady gaga which is the most ridiculous one to me because i think it's so it has to be solely based on their blonde hair i mean look like these two people's work seem really different from one I, another it seems like lady gaga is is trying to be your your heir apparent would you agree with that you're trying to get me to say things <laughs> right now see you're t- and you know i understand you know people want to hear hear about things but i i think she's cool I, she has a really great tat rilke uh it's a philosopher i really respect she has a rilke tattoo on her arm i really i really thought that was cool when she got that and uh okay so you respect her that she oh, reads of course i res- you know i respect for anyone any i have respect for anyone in this field who who puts himself out there even if i don't like even if i didn't like what they're doing i would still uh on that level i would have respect for them do you have any intellectual um preoccupations do you do you read any any kind of books that that really start to you know get you thinking about things that's one thing that people don't want to Actually, I think I'd like to think that most people realize at this point that I am a smart person and I am an intellectual. Like, uh, a lot of people don't know this about me. Like, I love, love, love Coen Brothers movies. Really? I think they're so, I think they're such great directors. Like I, Bart- I didn't know that, that you're, you're a big fan of the Coen Brothers. I mean, I'm, you know, I love film. Um, but, like, Barton Fink, I think, is such a great movie. Yeah. Such a story. But I went to go see that with Rosie O'Donnell. She just hated it. Really? Huh. She did not get it all. I but could she, see her not liking she, that. She, you know, she likes, like, she likes just, like, sappy movies. Yeah, you know? she likes Adam Sandler films or no, something. No, no, no. But I, you know, like be like, you know, chick flicks. She likes the yeah, chick flicks, right, and I right. don't mind a chick flick. But uh, how Stellar got her groove back, you know, th- those kinds of things. Something like that. I can't remember what we went to go see, and I was like, oh god, this is such a snooze. And she just thought it was so sweet and everything. Right. But um, uh, but I love, but you know, shout out to Rosie. She's been my friend for so many years. Uh. Uh yeah, but uh, yeah, like I mean, do you do you when you do find your do you read the New York Times? I mean, what kind of? I try not. You know what? I really try not to get into the the press stuff anymore. I try. I really try to avoid it. I mean, the internet, especially the internet, it's just a hurtful place uh, for anyone. But when you're famous, it can be really hurtful. Um. So no, no, I, I don't, I don't, I try not to read my press. I just try to, to do what I want to the fullest of, and work with the people I want to work with. Now, uh, you know, as you continue to, to age in this business, um, do you see yourself maybe going back into film more? It's been a while since, since we saw you anything. Um... I directed a movie a couple years ago, and that was really fun. You directed a film? What was that? Yeah, I mean, it was about... It was a period piece. It was about uh, this guy. He was the incumbent. This is like turn of the last century. He was the incumbent uh, king, basically, of England, and he fell in love with a woman of non-royal birth. And he basically sacrificed his 
ability to become king to be with this woman. Right. So I directed that movie, and that was a lot of fun to do. Was it well received? You know, I maybe... Some people thought it was really good. I mean, I got a, I was, they said it was very well shot. Hmm. Um, you know, uh, and it was, it was something I'd always wanted to do, and I worked so hard on it. Uh, but I think for the acting uh, side of things, um, I, uh, I think I'm good. I think I, I think I like to just, cause when you do a film, you have a director and these other actors and you know, I'm 50 some years old. I'm Madonna. I want to be able to do exactly what I want to do. Okay. So we're desperately seeking season two ever. Maybe, maybe I don't see. I don't see it happening. You know what, though? This is what I think about that too. Is films like that don't get made as much anymore? The sm smaller uh, studio, you know, like in the '90s, Miramax and these types of studios, different types of studios, they had budgets for like, like now, like I read this article recently. I can't remember where I read it, but it was like between, like, like either your film has to have like, uh, like a half million dollar or less budget. Or like, uh, like a whatever, two hundred, a hundred million dollar budget, mm -hmm. and there's like not hardly any movies that they even make that are like in between that. Do you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. So that, and to me, that's a problem for for that for the industry. I mean, honestly, I don't have to really worry. I mean, it's a shame. It's you know, I care about I care about art, but for me, I don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. But I do. I do see that it's harder to to be, be new and because a lot of the a lot of the girls out right now had to go through an entertainment industry cycle. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I went through that cycle. I got into that cycle, but I didn't. I didn't come from that cycle. I wasn't raised in that cycle. Like. Especially like when Britney was having such a hard time a couple years ago, almost ten years ago now. Yeah, but she seems to be back. On oh, the she's old doing horse. fine. She's doing. Uh, she's doing great now. But you know, I was really lucky. I, I was like 26, 27 before I got to be famous. Right. Britney Spears, seventeen years old. Yeah. Uh, with a huge career. And so I got to go to New York and make the mistakes and go out and party and do all these things. And she never got that. Miley Cyrus never, never got to have that time to just, uh, make mistakes. So, right. So, and that's because they were actresses, they were this, they were that. And they, and I'm not saying a negative to them of their work, but I'd like to see somebody who I felt really came up in a real, from a real art background and really succeeded. I don't know if it's possible anymore. Hmm. I don't know. Wow. I want it to be possible, but I don't see it. I just don't see it out there. Wow, so you, you see the, the, for any young person to break through would be much more difficult now. I mean, MIA, uh, as much as she, gets on my nerves sometimes. Um, I admire her because I think she did take a little bit of what I had done and take it to that really political social place. And come, and she does come from a more creative and more just musically interested background. Right. But she doesn't have a, a career like anyone. Like she, her career is like compared to like, I don't know, like Ariana Grande's career, Kate, like Katy Perry's career is like, right. Doesn't exist. But anyway, but she does, but she at least is getting a seat at the Grammy. She's at least, oh, you know, yeah, you know she's, she gets she's, invited to, to these big televised she's events. She's in things. there. She's in the Rolling Stone photo book or something. I saw this Rolling yeah. Stone. But anyway, we better wrap up. What, uh, what, do you have a final question for me? Adora? Yeah. Um, who had the bigger schlong, Sean Penn ha. or Jean ha. Uh, Jean Paul Basquiat, Jean Michel Basquiat? I, I'm not going to speak on that. Really? Uh, Come on, at least give us like a hint. I'm not going to say. 
I'm going to just let you I'm sure you could see Sean's in some movie. Yeah, I'm sure you could. Okay, well, well okay, serious last question. Uh, what what advice would you give to those uh wishing to become uh, you know, mainstream uh, pop cultural figures or wh wh whatever it is, actually. I mean, whatever creative endeavor. Do you have any kind of lasting advice? If you really want to do it, like, do it like uh, I might have done it. Be ready to handle it. Like, the whole thing. Don't just say, I'm just this or I'm just that. Okay. I'm just, I just sing or I, or I just am, you have to be see the whole picture the okay. world around you the your press your your output the way you're portray you know you need to understand and the way people are going to react to that got you, it you need to under you need to be ready, ready to handle the whole thing all right got it well thank you madonna I, thank you so much a, for having it, me it was a real pleasure to talk to you and uh we hope you listening audience um got something out of it as well and uh thank you for listening to outbreak and uh the show will be back uh next week or is it two weeks from now it's a month from now I it's a month think. from now okay That's so what i heard we might show. have rihanna on, i heard they might have rihanna okay so Beyonce, dolly parton it's very up in the air whoever yeah. is in town whoever it is it's gonna be next it's gonna be good so. yeah it's gonna be good all, All right. right. Well, thanks, Madonna. Thanks, Max. <laughs> Bye-bye.